Hey, welcome to this section of the blog. Um, if you're not watching this on the blog, if you're watching this on YouTube, then just go to fasterglobal.com forward slash blog and you'll find it somewhere in there. Or I'll put the full link in the um, little right a bit underneath this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button too. That'd be nice. Um, then subscribe to my channel. I want to show you this just out of interest. Um, if you read the blog, you'll see why. Now, I'm not saying as a personal trainer, you need to be able to analyze golf. I'm saying as a personal trainer, you need to be able to analyze everything. And so golf is just a video I had available and um, it looks a bit blurred. Well, that's kind of on purpose because I've shot it at such a, such a, um, a, a slow sort of speed. So it's, it's a lot of frames per second is what I'm trying to say. Now, when people see a golf swing, then they'll usually see um, just a swing. So if I move this to a normally pace, they'll see the arm come back and then they'll see the swing through the ball. And it's a pretty decent swing there, especially as we have no ball and target. So you'll see the movement round over the turn and it's gone. Now, my point when I was um, talking in the blog was a lot of trainers would say, brilliant, to improve that, what I need to do is, it looks like they need to have a quite a good core. So I'll pick some core exercises, plank and all that stuff. Um, golfers have been told they need to have a strong glute, so I'll pick some glutey stuff too. So, you know, planks, um, sorry, <laughs> planks, that's core, bridges and that kind of thing. Although, um, important to know that now there's a new cooler thing than a bridge. Um, and that's a, a power bridge with a bar across your pelvis. But whatever, they'd say improve glute strength, uh, maybe improve shoulder strength. And that would be, you know, a regular kind of golf program. And you might see some cable work. And um, some people would go, oh, no, all you need to do is deadlift and Olympic lift. And the point would be, if you really know what you're talking about, you'd have to say, most of that stuff would improve some golfers. So that's the first bit. Unfortunately, most of it would improve some golfers somewhat. Because the reality is with a golfer and with an anything else, the better you are, the more specific the training needs to be for carryover. But the worse you are, the less specific the training needs to be for carryover into the sport. And so a faster trainer, a trainer that should should really know what they're doing should look at this and they should start thinking about some questions on here so first of all they'd say this when I when I'm building this training um how good are they so this is this has come out a huge look question mark how good are they so that's the that's the first thing um let's see if I can type that in for you so you can see it Oh, good. So that's the that's the first thing we're interested in. So the second thing, well, if we know how good, and really what we're asking is how specific. That's the first question. How good? How specific? Same sort of thing. And then the second question, um, the second question that we'd have to ask is, what are we trying to do? Like, what's our outcome? And so our outcome is either going to be uh, performance. Oh, our, our outcome, sorry. Our outcome is either going to be performance So that means taking the skill they've got and improving it. That would be performance or it's gonna be skill development. Now, skill development should really be in conjunction with a coach, to be fair, but actually it's something that we need to work on too, um, depending on the standard of the um, client in front of us. So if the outcome is performance, we need to do stuff that carries over to their game. 
Now, the better they are, the more it needs to look like this. Now, I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, I've done functional training, performance-specific training for golf, and it's ruined their golf club. And, you know, you can't, if you weight the golf club, it would be bad. And if you put it on a band, it would be bad. And if you put it on a um, cable, it's bad. And if you give them a cable with a golf handle, it's bad. And, and that's because those people don't understand how force is generated, accelerated, decelerated, in this movement and because of that all they do is take the movement they see that they think looks like a rotation with a pull and then they recreate that in the gym with no thought to what actually is going on and they recreate in the gym with no thought of actually how to load this now a lot of golfers what you could do is you could take some big components of the golf swing and you could say well if I can get the thoracic to rotate enough, if I can get the pelvis to rotate enough, then that'll be good. Now, what, what you're seeing here is a really a loads of range in the thoracic look, a little bit of range, probably could do with a little more range in the, um, with the hip rotating round. Um, and you're seeing a little bit, but not a lot of movement on that right leg. And that should be minimal too. You need to see that left knee bend a bit and you do and that's the movement. So if this golfer was terrible, and uh, I'm not a golf pro, I can't tell you that, then you could probably do some thoracic -y stuff and some hip stuff and some follow through movements. Um, and you could probably do them away from this. So it, it might just look like a traditional rotation at the thoracic or something glute related or transversely lungy or it might even be less than that. It might be deadlift and squat and shoulder press or one arm shoulder press. And you get some carryover to the sport. But if you want this client to get really good in performance, then you need to start looking at the points where there's a, um, a force requirement. So if we look at this with our HMAC eyes, something you'd learn on a specialist level, then what we'd say is, well, first of all, what moves first? So it's clear here that he starts by rotating the club and moving his arms back. Now, presuming that's what you're doing in a top golf swing, that's what we might say. So that's the initiation of the movement. So that's sort of an internal rotation of that left shoulder, an external rotation of that right shoulder, flexion of both, abduction of both, and more abduction on the right side, perhaps uh, on the left side, perhaps as the right's being tucked in. And so, that movement then generates a rotation at the thoracic, so a right rotation, a more right lateral flexion initially, and then a move out that right lateral flexion into left lateral flexion at the thoracic. And then we start to see the body weight move onto that right leg. And so you see that the um, lumbar feels, it actually feels a, a, a left rotation before it feels a right, and you see it feels a left lateral flexion um, for the whole time and what you see is that left hip externally rotates and abducts and then arguably it internally rotates as the foot starts to collapse on the left side the right hip internally rotates and adducts but not far because he's trying to keep that um, solidness in that right leg and um, so the right foot could be going towards inversion and locking up so the knee stay um, straight unlike the left knee that's bending, that all could be happening at that time. Now, what we've got to think about here is, um, we can take that as individual parts, or we could say, well, that's all decelerating, and if we can keep that sequence, that's a good thing to do. Now, what's interesting here is, he starts to slow down at, at his um, pelvis look around here, and then his pelvis starts to move away first, while his arms are still traveling. There's a little bit of lift in that club, but that's fine. But this part here is the interesting bit because what he's got to do is he's got to pull these arms around with his hips at pace. And so that's the acceleration component. Just there is the acceleration component of this movement. And so to generate that acceleration, um, what we need to do is work out, well, how do we load this? So the load needs to be rotational, needs to be lateral, 
and it, it needs to resist that hip coming through but at the same time not change the sequence if we're working at performance that shoulder then should should look at can we resist at this point when the shoulder starts to come through at pace can we do it with a step and then finally as you watch the movement through look the movement through is kind of push through with that right foot but here's the next point of resistance right up the top so have we got the range to be able to slow down at, at end range up there we call that neural notching um can we do that so that that would be some really specific loading so we probably load here and we probably load there and then we probably load going through and the load on the the backswing side then um we'd be looking at something on the backswing that would be would be going up and around but we'd be looking for um a load the opposite side to sort of pull the club through and we're looking at the the first thing that we want to resist would be at the hip so probably something coming out here and the second thing we uh sorry not coming out there we're pushing that way and then the the second thing we might want to resist are the arms and so pulling that way and so that would be our motion when we're creating range it looks like this is a massive component of creating range having the ability to get around that right hip and then it looks like the thoracic and then maybe this hip on the follow through is an important part in in the second part of the section so for performance we have very specific ranges to work at and very uh, very specific resistances um to go for but unless you're working with a top end golfer and they're being coached by a top end golf coach maybe these things aren't as relevant as just getting some movement that's similar to those motions now it could be you don't get into these motions until the client's fatigued and you're trying to work on their performance towards the end of a um, golf round if you know that fatigue starts from the first point you start to golf if you can start to prove to that individual that they have more endurance than they need that might carry over and it and actually improve their game at the start and their dropping game will just be to the level it is now now skill development is something completely different skill development is not around performing this perfect technique with this perfect load in skill development is about getting the sequence you want so you want the sequence and you want to occur in as much stuff as possible so that the body starts to recognize that as something that's important. So that means what we need to do is we need to take the important components of this. So we want, we want the um, first component wants to be um, say big thoracic mo motion, maybe fairly big hip rotation a fairly big hip and then what we want to do is um, we want to take those two together and then we want to say well big thoracic big hips great now we want to look at this and say well what else have we got to do in there and we might say well we want to ge generate power where at one point it's the hip generating the power so that's traveling this way but at the same time the shoulder is traveling the opposite way um, and so if we can get those two components and a fairly sturdy right leg fairly stiff right leg for a lot of the movements then what we can do is we can put those together and make those the skill basis so the the basic components of the skill and then what we do is we put that into as many different exercises as possible we can also do this um, for the follow-through which would be big range over that left hip and so we can put that into as many exercises as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that now by tagging on the back end of this loads of exercises. Now, what what you need to know as a trainer is if I, if you're someone who is training people and you can't see in this detail and there is a lot of detail there, you could choose go to the foot, go to the thoracic, go to wherever you like. But if you can't see in this much detail, then you need to. 
Now, some of this is guesswork, and you're going to put your hands on and go, no, that's not what happened. Some of this is coach-driven, so you're going to speak to a coach and then go say, actually, that's not what I want to happen. And some of this is just going to be in the feel of the um, client. Now, what's important is that if you can, you can have measurements on this. So um, we use a, um, a measurement device, and at the bottom here, you'll be able to see a link to a, a course where you can get hold of, of um, all the measurement stuff, which is pretty decent. It's, it's um, an app that comes with a sensor, and the sensor allows 3D um, assessments on a chart with recording without you having to do hardly any work at all in terms of um, writing anything or, or tracking anything. And and that's a, a really cool piece of software to show your client how you're improving. Uh, and on the course, we show you how to do this with a coach, um, but also how to do this with clients of all backgrounds in all different motions. So that's the, that's the initial part. What we've got here is we've got this golf swing which we can, um, I've just cleared all this so that we can see it again. Um, and while I was talking to you, just filled the time, didn't it, right? So as we see this, what you'll see is everything we've just said are in these movements. So the movements that follow this, um, which I won't be voicing on, the movements that follow this, you can look at and, um, and see if you can find the similarities see which you like and don't like, see if you choose them. But this this point here, if you see the first component we're interested in is getting there. So can we keep the legs straight and pretty still, allow the body to rotate over, let the left knee bend, but the right not bend too much. Can we get the hip away and then can that pull the arms? Can we get the arms through and turn that foot? Um, I think because he moves so far here, He's now driving into the ground a little bit. Um, and then can we spin that, that right leg and get ourselves all the way over? So I'm not saying that's the best golf swing, but it's all right. And you can see the components of things we're going to move, work on. The skill development will become from the, the range of different movements we can put with that skill being required. And the, um, the performance will come from really accurate loading. And all this is the sort of stuff you should be able to see and deal with for any kind of client at, at any time. And, and if you can do that, that'll make you stand out against all the other trainers and it'll start to get you some massive results. It'll allow you to have a, um, a confidence about yourself, but it'll also, you won't have the ego because you know that some of this is quite subjective and you need to go and check the research to make sure that you've got right what you're you think you've got right um and so that would be that would be what you need to to look at as um a trainer and so if you're doing a course and you're learning your level two three then that's good that's just before the old shit line um and that's where you're going to learn safety and um, how exercise affects muscles and heart and things. But if you're gonna get above the line, then you have to have the ability to see all this, the ability to ask those big questions, and then the ability to go and find the answers and the eye to see this in a session before you then go and use it. And so you need to have that available to you. Otherwise, you just won't be the trainer that we know you want to be because we know you've got that desire to help people the best way you can. Um, I've left three course links below this in the blog so that you can have a play and um, get to grips with it yourself. I hope you enjoy these exercises after and I hope this talk's been worthwhile your time. Okay, thank you.